designers, stop using frames and start using auto layouts. Now, if you're still moving items around manually and placing them on your screen, then I really recommend applying auto layout as much as possible so that you can make your designs A, responsive and B, flexible so you can move elements around or add or remove items without having to move everything else around. Now, when I started as a designer, I didn't use auto layout as much, but now I use it on a daily basis. I can't even imagine a day without auto layout, but if you're confused about it, if you don't use it as much, don't worry. I put together a little template that we can use and we'll touch on things like nested auto layouts, the new wrap features and explore those together. So if you're ready to get started, go ahead and click on the link below in the comment section to download a copy of this template file and let's learn how to auto layout. And to do that, I'm going to open this auto layout playground. Feel free to follow along or grab the link and do this later. I'm going to duplicate this to my drafts. And let's go frame by frame and see what auto layout is all about. So in an auto layout frame can be created as long as you have either two items selected or a group or a frame. And by default, Figma will arrange items in a similar fashion to how objects are already arranged horizontally or vertically. We've done this before. To create a result like this, we'd want to either frame this rectangle. So turn it into an auto layout frame by clicking plus here and then going inside and duplicating the rectangle. That's one way to do it. The other way is we can duplicate this rectangle like so, select two of them and do plus on auto layout. Now, if the arrangement of my rectangles were improper, auto layout will fix that. However, if they were arranged, auto layout will arrange that and assume that you want a horizontal layout. So going back to a vertical layout, you can duplicate this and we have a similar shape. Over here for our horizontal and vertical arrangement, use auto layout to properties to arrange this frame horizontally instead. That's simple. From this arrows over here, we can control how we want the layout. Vertical, which is already selected, or horizontal. And auto layout will keep the same 20 pixel spacing between the items. Adding a background and a padding. If we want to add a background like this to our auto layout, we're not supposed to draw a rectangle in here bigger than the items like we usually do in frames. We simply click plus on the fill and give it a fill color. And it's asking us to create a 20 pixel padding horizontally, which is over here. We can either drag or set custom number and 40 pixels padding vertically. Now the 40 pixels is 40 pixels from the top and 40 pixels from the bottom. And these blue markers let you arrange this by dragging, same thing with the spacing, same thing with the horizontal padding. We can also, of course, give our auto layout a corner radius. Now, sometimes we may need to nest auto layouts inside of each other in order to accommodate for things such as titles, text, or other layers. So in order to achieve this with an auto layout frame, if we add a text right now, you'll see it gets added in between my items. If I arrange it vertically, then all the items will also be vertical. That's not what we want. We just want a text layer that lives above this three rectangles and also utilizes auto layout so that we can add or remove more elements. And to do this, we'll need to use another auto layout for these three rectangles by clicking plus here. Now, if we add a text layer here, as you can see, I can place them to the left and right of this 
rectangles, and I can arrange my parent auto layout frame to be vertical. Like, so now we have an auto layout frame that's vertical with a title and another auto layout frame inside of it that's horizontally laid out. I hope that makes sense. For our item spacing, we can rearrange the item spacing between the items by double clicking, selecting this auto layout and rearranging our spacing in this case to 40. I can type it in. We can even do a negative spacing. Now using a negative spacing, we can rearrange these three circles that are avatars and bring them into each other. This is a pretty common pattern we see in UI UX design. Now over here for the advanced auto layout settings, we can choose to either include the strokes in the layout, which will give it a more wider display so, or exclude it from the auto layout. We can also choose, do we want the last items to be at the front or on top or the first items? And that's the first items in the auto layout frame. So this is the first one. This will be on top of the other one. Whereas if we do it the other way around, we see, you see now it's at the bottom. And finally, this last option here, if we did have text in the auto layout, we can make sure that it's aligned to the baseline. We've already used wrapping before. If you use wrap instead of the horizontal or vertical, nothing will happen right away. But as soon as we start stretching our auto layout frame, items will start moving up. You can still control the spacing between items and increase and decrease them. You can increase and decrease the spacing vertically between items as well. This has its separate setting. And you can choose how items are arranged as well. Now in this auto layout frame for the items here, there are maximum and minimum widths. There's a minimum width of 320 pixels and a maximum width of 360 pixels. So based on the space available as I start to stretch this auto layout, you'll see this is the minimum width an item can be. And because they are set to fill, they'll try to take as much space as possible while keeping those constraints in mind. This is good when we're working with different device sizes. Let's say we want a card component that works with a tablet and also for the web. This is where setting a minimum and maximum width or even height can come in handy. As I just earlier showed, we can arrange the items in our auto layout frame using the alignment options, both vertically and horizontally. We can also set a custom padding for our auto layout. Although we have horizontal padding and a vertical padding, if you want to set a custom one, so for example, 40 pixels from the bottom and only 10 pixels from the top. We can click on this individual padding and now we have a top padding. So we can set this one to 10. We have a bottom padding. We can set this one to 40. And so now we can rearrange each side's padding individually. Beautiful. Lastly, we can group items inside of auto layout frames so that they are not affected by the rules of the auto layout. And we, got, we can also use what's called an absolute position. And so to achieve that, if I double click and group the number one and the circle here together using command G, now I can drag my number one on top of the circle. I'm going to use command and the close bracket 
to bring that number up. And now in order to move this group that we just created over on top of my rectangle, because I can't do that since we have an auto layout, the simplest way is to use an absolute position, which will ignore the rules of auto layout for this group. So now I can place it anywhere that I want, even inside of an auto layout frame. And there are no rules associated to it. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this, you're gonna love the product design masterclass that I have upcoming. It's a cohort based course where me and other designers join you in becoming the best designer you could be by giving you access and knowledge on how to use all the tools that Figma allows from prototyping to animations to more of auto layout and many other things. If you'd like to take a look at that course, there's a link in the comment section below as well. And I hope to see you in an upcoming cohort. With that said, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.